now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, Lady Adriana Beardsley walked across the sweeping veranda of Stokely House on a crisp autumn afternoon. All was extremely peaceful. She handed her brother an unusual-looking rifle with a telescopic sight. Here you are, Conrad. Oh, it looks great. Thank you. You know what you have to do. <laughs> I'm strictly a one-man shot. You know that, sis. Do I just wing him, or... My dear Conrad, you are demonstrating the rifle. I'm not. Just show me at the set years, that's all. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel take a refresher course in arms and ballistics, and Steed advises her to shoot straight from the shoulder. Stokely House can be glimpsed through the trees of its vast and splendid grounds. Its gardens are beautifully kept with glowing flower beds bordered with clipped hedges splashing ornamental fountains and well-swept gravel paths. Across the smooth lawns, the proud peacocks cry their harsh, strident calls to the grey sky. <coughs> Crouched in the shelter of a clump of flowering shrubs was a young man in his early twenties. He carried a rifle held at the ready. Using every available piece of cover, he scanned the garden carefully. There was no sign of the man, Conrad. A peacock screamed again. The man wheeled round. Beads of perspiration trickled down the side of his face. He stumbled. About 50 yards away, Conrad heard the noise. He moved forward silently, saw the man, and a thin smile of triumph broke over his face. He stooped and picked up an egg-shaped stone from the base of a wall. He pitched it effortlessly into a clump of bushes to the right of the man. The man spun round and let loose a magazine into the bushes. The shots crashed and echoed around the silent garden as Conrad rose from behind the wall and almost casually lifted the rifle to his shoulder and squinted down the sight. He fired. As Conrad turned away from the dead man, the silence of the garden was broken by light clapping. Adriana Beardsley rose from the chaise longue on the terrace. She had a stopwatch on a golden chain about her neck. Well done, Conrad. Three minutes, point sixteen and two fifths. Jolly well done. Come and have some tea. Adriana Beardsley and Conrad weren't the only ones to be taking an interest in firearms that afternoon. John Steed's London News home looked like an armory. Guns were lying or propped up all over the place. Rifles, revolvers, stens, submachine guns. A lot. Exactly, Mrs. Beale. Thought we'd do a refresher course in arms. Must keep our knowledge up to date, you know. Um, any particular reason, Steve? I mean, you're not thinking of trying all this lot out on anyone we know. Uh, not at the moment. Let's, uh, let's see how much you know. Steve picked up a squat automatic. This is a Zagami, new Italian. Quite effective at close quarters. Hmm. Looks it. I've never fired one of those. Uh, know this one? Uh, Mather point thirty-eight nine millimeter automatic kicks to the right. Hmm. Very good. And this? Steed picked up a concussion grenade and tossed it to Mrs. Peel. She caught it with one hand very neatly. It's a concussion. 
concussion grenade. The pin comes out like this. Mrs. Peel whipped out the pin. Mrs. Peel! Mrs. Peel grinned, her finger still depressing the firing lever. She slipped the pin back and threw the grenade back to Steed. Naughty. Never play with firearms. What are these? Uh, a clip of bullets. Uh, Czechoslovakian, 7.65 millimeter for an automatic. Good girl. This? Elkin 1065, telescopic sight. Very useful hunting gun. Although if I were after really big game, I'd use the Borsch. The one over there against the chair. Matter of preference, I suppose. You seem quite well clued up. I have been known to keep abreast of things. So I see. Uh, know what this is? Steed took a bullet from his pocket. It had been fired. Mrs. Peel caught the slug again with one hand. She examined it, a frown of disappointment creasing her forehead. Mm, you've got me this time, Steed. Sorry, I don't know. Well, don't let it bother you. Well, what is it? I don't know either. Well, that's an admission. I've got an idea it's from a new type of rifle still on the restricted list. Where on earth did you get it, Steed? Hmm? Oh, out of a body. Ooh, whose? Again, I don't know. No identification. Very difficult. Male, early 20s, cased in concrete. Somebody making sure of things. Quite. It was dredged out of a gravel pit in Hampshire. Might never have been found. Bit of luck, really. Oh, not for him, poor fellow. This should be easy enough to check on, though, shouldn't it? Well, I was hoping you'd think so. You've got the job. The ballistic center at Shrivelham is expecting you. I've warned them you'd be calling. I thought there was something practical behind this gun check. Why don't you want to? Oh, I'd love to, but I'm busy. Um, I must call an old school friend. How nice for you. Who is up to no good. Oh. When you get back, we'll go down to the rifle range. Your theory on the arms here is pretty good. We'll see how good you are in practice. You in a betting mood, Steed. Because you're going to lose. No kidding. See you. Emma Peel waved cheerfully and headed for her car. John Steed made off in the opposite direction. He parked near a very expensive hotel, strolled nonchalantly, hat and umbrella in hand, into the foyer. There was no one in the lift but the male attendant. Good afternoon, sir. Going up. Thank you. Six, Six floors close for repainting, sir. Steed smiled amiably. Well, then, let's try the seventh. The attendant gave Steed a somewhat quizzical look and took him up to the seventh floor. Once there, Steed simply slipped down the servant's stairs to the floor below, parting the swing doors with his umbrella. He moved silently through them and found himself confronted by an enormous Greek gentleman, impeccably dressed. Steed advanced and said, Good afternoon, I have an appointment. The enormous Greek gentleman advanced and said, <laughs> Uh, an appointment with Colonel Aristides. Uh, the Greek, whose name was Giles, shot out a hand for Steed's throat. Steed sidestepped, caught the arm in a lock, propelled him to the swing door, and kicked it open. In the corridor, he hit Giles sharply over the head with his umbrella and threw him at the far wall. Incoherent to the last. Steed turned, made his way back into the hotel's sixth floor, selected the door of the fire suite and knocked with his umbrella. Come in. John Steed. The man was sitting behind the desk, holding a pistol across the blotting pad. Steed found himself looking down the barrel. I'm beginning to think the sixth floor doesn't welcome visitors. Hello, Colonel Aristides. Steed, my dear Steed, come in. Oh, thank you. Welcome to swinging London, Colonel. Uh, put that ridiculous gun back in the drawer and tell me exactly what you're doing here. Is that an order, Steed? As your senior school captain, yes, of course. Well, put like that, how can I refuse? Uh, come in, take a seat. We have a great deal to talk about, haven't we? Mrs. Peel completed her task at the ballistics center at Shrivenham. They'd examined the bullet Steed had given her, they'd measured it and photographed it and submitted it to various tests. In the end, they handed it back to her. Mrs. Peel said, Thank you. Dropped it into her handbag and left. Outside in the car park, Conrad was talking to two other men. We believe they are under the body. She took the evidence in there. Edickson, you know what you have to do. Sure. You've got me car. Leave it to me. 
Jackson, stay with me. Right. Look, here she comes. Move in. Mrs. Peel had reached her car. As she approached it, Erickson appeared in front of her, a gun in his hand. He held it low, unnoticed by any passerby. Give me that handbag. Certainly. <laughs> Mrs. Peel made a gesture as though she was passing the handbag and then whirled it on its strap and hit him between the eyes. <laughs> Quick as a flash, Mrs. Peel kicked him smartly in the stomach. <laughs> like a mule and moves like lightning, does our Mrs. Peel. She made for her car, climbed in, started, reversed, and was, in a matter of seconds, heading for the exit from the car park. Conrad, in his car, made after her, heading to cut her off. Got to get her. But Mrs. Peel was thinking ahead, as always. She appreciated that she had a double enemy, at the ramp to the exit, she stopped, reversed, and tore down to the entrance. What goes in must come out. Yeah. Baffled, Conrad screamed his car round in a sharp curve. She mustn't get away. Hold on, Jackson. I'll fix this little witch. It is the last thing I do. Careful, careful, Mr. Conrad. It might be just that. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.